Hey everybody, Chef Britt here with ATBBQ.com and today we're making chicken tikka masala. So this dish is beloved by many all over the world and I'm really excited. We're gonna cook it on the Napoleon P500 gas grill and I'm gonna show you some new flavors that we're carrying here at All Things Barbecue. So let's just hop on in and get started. So it starts with a couple cups of full fat plain yogurt, a quarter cup of kosher sea salt, and then we're gonna squeeze a few lemons to get about half of a cup of lemon juice. Now we'll just mix to combine. And then I've got about five pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I'm just gonna come through and open it up a little bit by scoring. So this is gonna allow the marinade to really penetrate through and tenderize our meat. We're just gonna massage this marinade in and really get everything properly submerged. So we'll allow that to sit for four to six hours before we fire up the grill. If you wanted to, let's say, marinate this overnight, I would just omit the lemon juice and the yogurt will do all the heavy lifting, but I wouldn't want to take it too far, so I wouldn't go further past 12, 14, 16 hours. Your meat will just start to get a little too tender and it will be hard to manage on the grill. All right, we'll see you in four hours. All right, so let's see what's happened in about four hours. If you wipe this off, you're not gonna see probably too much graying or any sort of color change, and that's because the yogurt is a pretty gentle marinade, even though it has the acidic component. But we can see on the underside, the darker meat is starting to look uh, a little more tender, a little less pinkish color, but that's all right. That's how we know the yogurt is working. All right, so now that our chicken is ready, let's go get our grill prepped. So I'm really stoked that we're going to be using the Napoleon P500 RSIB. Today we are going to be using both the side burner and the charcoal basket insert. So let's go ahead and get our coals started. Good even layer there. And we'll just get that full flame going, get things started. All right, so while the charcoal heats up, let's get our vegetables prepped for our curry. Okay, so I've got some fresh ginger here and I'm just gonna peel it using my knife. Kind of just scrape off that extra skin. And I only need about three tablespoons of grated ginger in the end. So I'm probably just gonna do these two knobs right there. All right, and using the large side of a grater, we're gonna just get this going. I think that's plenty. We'll go ahead and do some garlic while we're at it. I'm kind of being brave today, but if you want, you can use a cut resistant glove. I know what you're thinking. 12 cloves of garlic seems like a lot, but it's really gonna just meld so well with all of our other great pungent flavors we're gonna build. So we've got these wonderful aromatics. Let's get some onions chopped. All right. So when I'm cutting onions for a recipe like this where we're doing long, thin slices, I try to go with the grain as opposed to against the grain because if I were to slice it like this, I would get little segments all along the uh, slice of the onion and it would end up cooking down into this sort of worm-like texture and I think it's just better if you cut with the grain. All right, so now that we have all of these wonderful aromatics prepped, let's talk a little bit about spices. This is a new product we're carrying here at All Things Barbecue. It's the N-Tube Curry Chili Paste, and I love this stuff. Um, it's got all of those wonderful sort of yellow curry notes with the turmeric, coriander, cumin, and a lot of other great spices, as well as a little touch of salt. We also have garam masala, which is another curry spice blend that's gonna bring more warm notes with clove, cinnamon, and paprika and the like. And then we're also gonna build our gravy with these wonderful canned tomatoes. All right, so right before heading out to the grill, I'm just gonna take the chicken out of the marinade and sort of wipe off the excess yogurt. Now, a lot of people will wanna put spices into their yogurt marinade, and you can do that, um, but I'd rather save my curry spices for 
the actual curry, and I feel like a lot of it just gets lost with the marinade in the end, so let's just put it all into our curry rather than into our marinade. Let's head out to the grill. So we're looking just to get a kiss of char. We're not looking to get a perfect cook on these. If anything, the higher the flame, the better. All right, so we're just gonna give that a couple minutes on each side. In the meantime, let's get our Dutch oven rolling here. Let's get this set up and on. So this is what we're looking for. Just a little bit of char on there. Like I said, I'm not worried about getting a perfect cook because we're gonna actually just take this, chop it up and throw it into our braise once it's there. Just as they've got the right amount of color on the outside, we'll put them off to the side. All right, to start our curry, we're gonna add a few tablespoons of ghee, followed by our onions. And we're just gonna allow those to soften before adding our other aromatics and spices. All right, so now that we've got this fairly cooked, we're just gonna chop it up so we can put it into our braise to finish. And because this is a pretty thin piece of meat after it's been deboned, uh, it's pretty quick to cook, so you can already tell it's pretty much there. So we're just gonna be able to add that right in without too much more cooking. All right, now that our onions have softened, let's add our ginger and our garlic. It's about to smell amazing. Now I'm gonna start blooming my spices and get my curry in there. I'm going for a good two or three tablespoons of curry paste to start. You can always add a little bit more. I'm also gonna add a half tablespoon of garam masala. And heating up the spices like this is just allowing them to open up and become fully fragrant. All that ginger, all the onion and garlic. I'm stoked. I'm gonna add a little bit more just because I love this stuff so much. So we wanna make sure we don't burn these spices, but once we get a nice fawn on the bottom here, we're ready for our tomatoes. And I'm just gonna kinda of go through and crush them up a little bit, help them break down, and that's gonna help pick up all the fond and the curry spices that have stuck to the bottom of the pot. So we've just allowed this to simmer and let those tomatoes totally break down. All of the garlic and ginger is cooked through. So now we're ready to add our diced chicken up in there. I know everybody at home is probably going, don't drop the chicken. There we go. So we'll let that come back up to a simmer. And we'll finish with just a little heavy cream, about a cup's worth. And that's gonna give us back to this sort of gravy consistency. It's important at this stage to give uh, everything a little taste. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little more oomph of spice with this Oak Ridge Habanero Death Dust. A little goes a long way with this stuff. And even though the name is intimidating, it really rounds out with all the cream. All right, so that's pretty much finished up. Let's take it on inside and plate it up. To plate this up, I'm just gonna do a little bit of this brown jasmine rice. Get a good amount of that curry right on top. And I really love the sauce on this, so I'm gonna go back for a little extra sauce. And to finish, just a little chopped cilantro. All right. I'm so excited. Mm. That's so comforting. I don't know about you guys, but I grew up eating curries. My mom introduced me to Indian food. And so this has just got an explosion of flavors 
the creaminess of the tomato sauce, but all of those spices, all of those aromatics are just booming. It's amazing. And the chicken has this really amazing sort of um, depth to it um, with the char that we've added. So it's really just an incredible dish. Well, that's it from me today. If you want to see all the products we use today, head on over to atbbq.com. And if you want to see more recipes, tips, and techniques from me or Chef Tom, head on over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All Things Barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.